Welcome back to our Insight 2024 conference. And again, it is great to see you all that have joined us here today. We've had our first session with Don, and now we're gonna move on to our second session with uh, me. <laughs> so my name is Matt Blackstock. I'm the learning manager here at Be Online Learning. And I wanted to take an opportunity just to kind of look at other ways you can play with a tool like Articulate 360 and kind of play with the design tool. Um, Articulate 360, particularly RISE 360, is a fantastic tool. It allows you to create fully responsive e-learning quickly, uh, effectively, and really just in time at a lot of the times as well, which is really, really handy when it comes to using RISE. And the great thing about RISE is because it's set up as a bunch of templates, you can literally choose the layout of your course and then copy and paste your content into it. But is that all you can do? And that's really the kind of the idea behind this session I want to share with you today. And that was, I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of different things to keep in mind when it comes to using Articulate Rise 360. And some of them might be old things that you're already aware of, but you kind of go, oh, actually, I haven't looked at that or I haven't done that for a while. So I'm gonna kind of revisit some old friends when it comes to RISE 360, plus also share with you some design tips in regards to how you can actually zhuzh up your RISE design to make it look really, really professional and make it look outside the box different to what you would normally expect with a RISE course. So without any further ado, let me get out of this PowerPoint and let me throw up my PowerPoint. Not that it's any better than that one, but you know, it's more to the point. <laughs> okay, so here we go. All right, I'm just gonna turn my camera off just so I'm not bobbing around in the corner and distracting us. And then I'll get into this presentation today. So as I said, I wanted to share with you a whole bunch of different design examples and tips that you can take away with you and use when you next design RISE, your next RISE 360 course. And as I said, I wanna visit some old friends to start with, okay? So let me just share my screen. Here it is, and there we go. So I wanna revisit some old friends to start with. And as I said, things that you probably already use, might have gotten a little bit complacent with. So just kind of reintroducing some of those ideas. And then I want to get into some design ideas, things like custom dividers between different blocks, uh, ways you can help in aligning icons when you're putting together labeled graphics, good ways that you can think outside the box with things like flashcards. Uh, also, a big one that I get asked often is that there is a scenario block within Rise itself. How do you use your own characters with that? because a lot of the time you are restricted to the content library 360 characters, but what if you had your own characters you want to bring into play? Well, the good news is you can bring them into play. Okay. And then we're going to talk about a thing called uh, GIFs, GIFs, whatever you want to call it. It's really about stuff that moves. Okay. And looking at ways that you can use particular graphics within your rise, just to give a little bit more dynamic to the presentation and also a bit more of an interest factor. And of course, it wouldn't be a complete chat about RISE if I didn't spend a little bit of time talking about storyline blocks and how they can further push out the design of your RISE course. So without any further ado, I'm actually going to share with you a RISE course. Okay, so let me just share my full screen with you. Here it is. And let me preview this course for you. So the first thing you'll notice is the title cover page moves, all right, it's animated. And what we traditionally do is with our cover page, we actually just use a pick an image and that image might be something we have locally on our computer, or it might be something that we've actually token and uploaded from the content library. But the good news is with Rise, you can also use GIFs, which are moving images. So at their core, they're small images. You can create them in all sorts of different ways. And I'll talk more about that once we get to it. But it just kind of, again, gives you a little bit more movement when it comes to your course. So I'll just reload that so you can have another quick look. And you can find GIFs on Shutterstock, on Shutterstock, iStock Photo. Uh, you can also create them yourself, and I'll give you some suggestions on how you can do that. But again, it just adds another little touch to your RISE courses in regards to making them look a little bit more dynamic and a bit more alive. So let's kick off with, first up, some old friends. All right, as I said, general settings and revisiting old friends. RISE has undergone a lot of changes ever since it was released in November of 2016. And in the early days of November 2016, everything was very template driven, which was exciting at the time because you could create something really easily. But after a period of time, everything got to look a little bit samey. 
So the good thing about some of these general settings is you can use them to make changes to how you present your content. So for example, this first couple of blocks is a standard color background, but then also you can now put images as backgrounds with text boxes as well. So if we just pop into edit mode for a moment, when you hover over your block, if you hit on your little painter's palette, your little style guide, that allows you not only to choose what color you want to use as the background, so you could have the standard white or black or dark, you can also pull from your um, actual color that you've chosen, you know, your key color. So in this case, I've chosen our blue. You can put that as a bold color. You can put it as a tinted color. So just a little bit more exciting than just straight up white, or you can import an image in the background, similar to what I've done here. So it kind of allows you to really customize on a block by block basis, as opposed to just being stuck with just going with black text on white or white text on black. And then in these other areas, as you scroll down, you can see that I've used the blue tint in the background, I've stuck with white, or I've also used the full bold color as well. So keep that in mind, you know, you've got a little bit of variety, not all blocks have to look the same. You know, you can make slight changes to them to customize them and make them look different based on what you're achieving or trying to do. So keep that in mind with the color palette. The other thing I want to share with you is you can also create blocks and turn them into templates. Now, often when we talk about templates, we think about the content library templates that come with Storyline 360 or corporate templates you might make for your own organization, which you then import into Storyline and use. But did you know you can actually choose a number of blocks from a RISE course and then turn those into a template? So for example, if I go up here, I might want to turn this heading and this little green separator and this background image, and I'll just preview that because it looks better in preview mode because I've actually, you can't see the padding on either side of the green line. I might want to save that as a way that I want to um, always use that to start each of my lessons. So here's what I would do with that, okay? I can go into my block library and you can do that by clicking the plus button come down to where it says block templates. And here is where when you create a template, they are saved. Now, if you need to create a new template, it's really easy to do. In the top right hand corner, you have the new block template button. And when you click that, Rise goes, yeah, okay, what do you want to include as the template? And you just tick the blocks you want to include as that particular template. So if I want to include this as my header for all my courses, I just select those and I hit save. And what will then happen, Rise will prompt me to give it a name. So uh, my header file, okay. It'll allow me to share it with my team if I have a Teams license, or you can just use it for your own use as the case be. And when you hit save, it now saves that as a template. How do you access it? Well, again, if you hit the plus button, back down to block templates, there it is there. So my header file has been created and I can drop that into any project. And you can do that with any blocks. You can see here that our team, we've got a whole bunch of different blocks that we've put together. Maybe we've had multiple parts of our team members working on one client's suite of programs. So a good thing about that is one person can save a template and then share it across the board with other people as well. So a really handy thing to keep in mind if you want to set up some templates as well. Now, the other thing I'd also encourage you to do is look at the existing blocks and look at how you might be able to use them in different ways than what you would normally expect to. So if I scroll down a bit, here I've got the learning objectives for my course. But what I've actually done is I've used a timeline block to present these. Now, traditionally a timeline block is something that allows you to give a date, what happened on that particular date, and a little bit of extra information, okay? But what I've done when I've edited my timeline blocks, I've just taken out the event title, I've put in the name of the learning objective at the top, and then included the objective below that. So it kind of gives me this little, nice little formatted box that the learner can scroll through to understand the learning objectives on my actual course. Now, as part of that, you'll also notice that I've got these icons here. Now, here's another little tip. Traditionally, with RISE 360, as far as accessing the content library, you only have access to images and illustrations. But what about all of those icons that you could possibly use to create some very minimalistic, stylistic images to add to your RISE course? Well, guess what? You can access them, just not directly through RISE. 
So what I want to show you is I want to show you that PowerPoint is much maligned, but it can actually be your best friend if you want to create quick little down and dirty animations. So I'm talking about icons in the content library. How do you access those? Well, when you create, when you get Articulate 360, one of the other apps that you have as part of your subscription is a tool called Studio 360. Now, this is an older program that uh, was what Articulate first launched when it did e-learning authoring. Uh, what it did was it uses PowerPoint as your main editing tool and then converts that into an e-learning module. Now, these days, Storyline 360 allows you to do much, much more. So Studio 360 is probably not used anywhere near as much as it once was. The reason why Articulate still include it is for any legacy learning you might currently have kicking around. So if you're going to create something new, you'd go with Storyline, not necessarily Studio. But the great thing about Studio is if you install it, it adds a little tab and a ribbon to your PowerPoint. And from that, you can access everything in the content library, whether it be photos, illustrations, icons, or videos. So for example, let's say I wanted to get an icon of a, a clipboard, that makes it easy. I can select a clipboard icon. I can insert that into my PowerPoint slide. I can use my PowerPoint slide to format it so I can change the color. You know, maybe I want to make it, uh, maybe I want to make it purple or whatever color it is. And then to get this into Rise, all I do is I right click on it and choose to save it as a picture. And when I save it as a picture, I might call that, you know, purple clipboard. Let's save it as a PNG or a JPEG, it, it, you know, whatever the case may be, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to save that. And now guess what? When I pop over to Rise, if I want to add that icon, because I've now got it saved as an image, guess what? I can upload it. So in this case, edit, replace, there's my clipboard, open, it'll upload that. So there you go. Now we have access to all the icons that are available in the content library. We're not just restricted to accessing them via Storyline 360, we can now access them through PowerPoint and then bring them across into Rise. Right. So that's a cooler thing to think about. The other thing that's a really handy one too is you could create something that looks a little bit like this. This is another way you could create some learning objectives or an overview of your course. So rather than using the timeline, I've come down here and I've got these lovely little white boxes. I've got some information in them and a heading. I've used the same trick. So I've gotten the icon through PowerPoint and brought that across into Rise. But then I've got these lines that actually connect each of my learning objectives. Okay. And these learning objectives are just white boxes on the screen. Now, of course, the beauty with Rise, because it's fully responsive, it'll automatically resize those and gives you kind of this little footpath that you can follow as you work through all of your learning objectives. Well, the way I've done that is I've actually used a tab interaction. Huh? A tab interaction? What are you, what are you talking about? Well, here's the thing. You could add another tab interaction. Okay. And then when you edit it, all you do is, is you remove all of the tabs except for one. So that then gives you the heading and the content and this nice little formatted box that you can use to set up your learning objective. Now, to add it to the rest of my learning objectives, all right, I could leave the photo there if I wanted to, or I could get rid of it, but I still want to be able to join it. See how I've got these lovely white lines? All right, well, let's Let's keep the photo. Let's change the background to match. So we'll use our theme color. And then what I want is I want another one of these little lines to connect module three. And let's say this is module four. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, guess what? Let's go back to our best friend PowerPoint. Because in PowerPoint, I can create a curved line. So go. All right. So there's my curved line. I can then format that 
Let's make it white. Let's make it dotted. All right. So now I've got a little picture here. And guess what? Just like the icon, I can right click on it, save it as a picture. So let's save it as, you know, module four line. Again, pop back over to Rice. And then between those two tab interactions, we're going to add just an image. So go add image, image centered. All right. We're going to change the bicycle default image out for our line. There's my module four line. All right. Now you can't see it because it's white. So let's change the background color to our theme color. And then we're going to get rid of the padding. So we'll turn the padding off. So that gets rid of the margin at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to pop back up to module three here and do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of the padding at the bottom. See how that brings that right up? Let's do the same thing with module four. Now there is a little bit of a gap there because normally it allows you to add a caption, but when you actually preview it or publish it, that gap is missing. So what you get is the effect of the white line joining together each year boxes, leading the learner through the modules or the overview, or whatever the case may be. So a handy little way that you can reuse existing blocks for different effects. What about this? Look at my transition here. Rather than being a straight line, I've got a nice little wave effect that actually transfers from my learning objectives into a heading line here. Okay. Mm, all right. How do we do that? Well, let's just go back into edit mode. Let's come down and lift the lift the hood and have a sticky peek at what's happened there. So what I've got is I've got a picture. And the picture is just a wavy line and it's the same color as the background. Okay. How have I done that? Well, guess what? Let's pop back over to our friend PowerPoint and let's pop up here. How did I make the wavy line? Well, this is what I did. I just grabbed a couple of shapes in PowerPoint. So let's grab, for example, this banner shape down the bottom here. Let's draw that full screen across our PowerPoint slide because it's got a nice little curve and you could adjust the curve a bit more if you wanted to as well. Oh, that's the end. We don't want to adjust the end. This one here, you could make it a little bit skinnier go a bit thicker. I like to make it so it's obvious. All right. Get rid of the outline. So again, let's go to my shape format. No outline. And let's change it to the theme, the blue. All right, so that's this blue here. All right, now I've still got the curve on both sides. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop in a rectangle. All right, so we'll just drop in a very skinny rectangle across the top here. We'll make that blue as well. Get rid of the outline. And that'll give me a nice sharp edge. I'm just gonna make that a little bit wider and I'm gonna bring that down to my wavy line. There we go. So I can block out the gap. So that's that's pretty good. And I just want to make sure that both of these shapes are aligned nicely. Okay, so now I've got a flat line on the top and a wavy line on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that and I'm going to save it as a picture. So right click, save as picture. Let's call that uh, my blue wavy line. <laughs> Transition. All right, again, we'll pop back over to Rise. Let's come down the bottom here. Let's add this transition between this blue block and this gray block here. 
Now, normally you'd say, okay, let's add it as an image. So I go, yep, plus, let's add a, an image. Uh, let's go image full width. That seems to make sense. And let's upload our wavy blue line. All right. Oh, that looks a bit yuck. Mm, okay, that's definitely not what I wanted. Mm, all right, let's try just image centered. Okay, that's not really going to work either because it's not long enough. All right, let's try something else. Let's try rather than using an image block, let's add a labeled graphic. What? I hear you say. Well, have a look at this. Pop the labeled graphic in, and we're going to go into edit it. And let's upload our blue wavy line. Okay. And I'm going to delete markers. And I'm going to close it. Okay. All right. Still doesn't look quite good. What's, what's going on there? Well, let's have a look at our format and change the image width to full width. Okay. So now it takes up the entire distance across our rise. So the last thing, let's get rid of the padding at the top. So we'll go, yeah, let's get rid of the, the top padding. Hey, look at that. So now that looks like it's joined and I've got the nice wavy line, but I've got this white background, which doesn't really sell the effect, does it? I want it to match this color. Well, guess what? That's easy because with my labeled graphic, I can go to the background, change the background to the theme tint, and now, my wavy line looks like a nice little transition between the two. There it is. So using a labeled graphic will give you a full screen width. You can get rid of the actual markers itself, and then you can actually have this nice little kind of flowing wave effect as your transition from one block to the other, as opposed to a straight line. And this can be used in all sorts of different ways too. It doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line. You could use an arrow or some, you know, particular isometric shapes or whatever the case may be. So for example, if I go into my next little example here, you can see we've done exactly the same thing with this for a client. But I've rather than done the weighty line, I've just added these two little arrows or blade out one of my colleagues here has added these two little arrows. And again, it gives a nice little transition from one block to the next that's something outside of just a straight line. Okay. So that's another cool little thing you can keep in mind when it comes to customizing the design of your actual content. All right. So it's a bit of a cornucopia of tips, but we're going to push on because there's a couple others that I want to cover off well and truly before I finish up. And I've got about 15 minutes still up my sleeve. So that's good. Timing is good. I want to introduce you to something called underscore no process underscore. Now, this may not be something you're familiar with. I definitely wasn't with it. I actually learned it from one of my colleagues. And what it does is traditionally when you upload an image to RISE, RISE will automatically compress that image. So if you use a high resolution image, RISE will actually compress it. And the reason why it compresses is that it's getting a nice balance between the quality of the image and also the size of the image, the file size, because the bigger the file size, the slower it can actually have as far as the experience goes. So when you just upload a picture, Storyline, uh, sorry, Rise will already do that compression. So if you have a look at my pictures here, you can see this here is the picture. It's the same picture. This is the one without, comp without the little no process tag. And I'll talk about that in a sec. So if you have a close look, and it might be a bit hard to see on the screen, it's fuzzy. All right, you can see the edges are fuzzy. You can actually see some artifacts in the background, so some blocky bits. All right. Generally, it's not something you would notice, <clears throat> but when I add the no process tag, it gets rid of that fuzziness. It keeps the nice sharp lines and keeps everything nicely in focus. So how do I turn that on? What's the process? Well, it's really, really simple. All you do is, can everyone see my images there okay? 
just check with my team, is that file size coming through okay? You can still see my screen. Yep. Yep, cool, okay. Here is the picture I just showed you, and that's the name of that file, Insight Normal. But what you can do is, if you just change the name of that file and add underscore, no process underscore in all caps, RISE sees that as part of the file name and it won't compress the image. So that, what's, that is what gives you this nice sharp look. So that's the picture without no process, a bit fuzzy. This one is the picture with no process. So it makes it nice and sharp, nice and clean and removes that compression out of what RISE can do with your course. And it's a little bit more obvious with this image here. Again, this image is without the no process, a little bit fuzzy around the edges. It is difficult to see, but you can see it. And then if I do the same image with the no process, it's nice and sharp and clean. All right, so that's a handy thing to keep in mind. If you find that RISE is compressing your images too much for you, just add to the image name, file name, underscore, no process in all caps, underscore again, important to have the underscore on both ends, dot whatever the file is, and then it won't do that compression as you go through. All right, so, couple of quick little design tools. And then I wanna show you some other ideas you can keep in mind when it comes to using some of the blocks that are available to you. So labeled graphics, I love labeled graphics, but the hardest thing about a labeled graphic is, is making sure you line up those markers well. Unfortunately, RISE doesn't give you the capability to select multiple markers and then actually align them by size or by say or distribute vertically or distribute horizontally or whatever the case may be. So again, within PowerPoint, your best buddy, you can take the image you want to turn into a labeled graphic and you can add some dots to it. Those dots you can line up, okay? You can distribute them nice and even, you can make sure they're nice and sharp on top of each other, etc. because these dots are gonna become the guideline for where we're going to put our labels, our, our little markers. So it doesn't matter what type of image it is, it could be something like this, it could just be four images in a line, but you wanna make sure those markers are nice and neat laid out, same space between them all. Just throw something, you could go into PowerPoint, you could even go into you know, Photoshop, any kind of tool that lets you add some dots or some guides. You can line up the guides in PowerPoint, and then when you bring it across into Rise, you upload the image, and then guess what? You can just add your labeled graphic on top of those dots. And it just helps you make sure that things are nice and neat and well laid out. So another little handy tip to keep in mind if you're looking at ways that you can do that. Okay, so if you have a look, if I go into the edit mode for this labeled graphic, you can see there's the red dot below it. And in fact, when you move markers, it allows you to pretty much line it up pretty nicely. If you add a new marker, it makes life easy and easier. Let me show you what I mean. Right, let's let's close that. I've got an example on the next page. Yeah. All right. When you first add a marker, oh, that one doesn't have it. Oh, let's go back. Sorry about that. Here we go. When you add a marker, you can use your crosshair to line up that red dot and then add the marker directly on top. So that way, everything is nicely lined up for you. It's kind of like, you know, aim and fire. And the other great thing is when you first add a marker, when you drag it around, it's actually semi-transparent. So you can see the red dot behind it. So you can line that red dot up however you want to and then release. So another really easy way that you can actually have a play and make sure all of your markers are lining up. So just add, add your guides to your original image and then align them from there. Now, if you're worried about having those guide dots on the original image, that's fine. Just create a copy. So duplicate the image, add your guide dots, upload the duplicated image into RISE, stick all your markers on it, then just replace the image. So replace that image with the one that doesn't have the guides. And that just makes life so much easier for you when you want to align stuff. All right. 
Now I've got a whole heap of different ideas here and I'm going to share this RISE course with you. So it'll be part of the actual thing. So you can go through and have a look at some ideas and what's available as well. But I want to touch on a few others just to kind of draw your attention to them as well. Flashcards are great. Easy way to add interaction to your RISE courses. But if you use the built-in flashcards, you can choose to add, you know, a full card image, a centered image or text. And if you use that, you can do so. You can throw a full card image and you can add text to the back. The problem is if you've got a lot of variation in your text, then it can look messy and quite unappealing. So here's another hint when it comes to working with flashcards. Don't use the built in text. Let's show you what I mean. Here is the after effect. All right, so much neater. Everything is sized the correct way and everything is center aligned. Hey, how did I, how did I do that? Well, guess what? Let's go back over to our good old friend PowerPoint and I wanna show you how I've done that. Let's open this up. Where's my flashcards? Here they are. What you do is you create a PowerPoint slide deck and you adjust the slide size to a custom slide size. Now it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's square. So it can be 20 by 20, it can be 10 by 10, it can be 15 by 15, whatever the case may be. And that gives you a nice square slide. Get rid of all, get rid of my guides here. And the nice thing about having the nice square slide is that you can actually put a text box on it and type your text up. You have complete control over what the text looks like, the format of the text, if it's aligned, left aligned, the size, whatever the case may be. And it really allows you to make sure everything looks similar. Okay, good alignment, everything's set up. The other great thing about PowerPoint is that if you're a little bit design challenged, like I am some days, you've also got within PowerPoint what's called the designer ribbon. And you can turn that on and it will give suggestions on images you add. So you can go, okay, oh, I like the look of that. And you can change the images to suit that. And of course, once you've got an image you like, you save that, but then you also save it as an image file as well. So we go file, save as, and rather than saving it as PowerPoint, you save it as PNG files. What that'll do is PowerPoint will turn each of those slides into a separate graphic file. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. So once they're all changed into separate graphic files, you've then got access to everything as images. So here's my title, here's my text. And so all you need to do then is when you go into your flashcards is when you upload it, you don't use the built-in text. You just put full card images on both the front and back of the, the flashcard and then upload your new images. So that makes it nice and neat and a lot nicer than the automatic alignment that's given to you. All right. All right. One of my personal favorites that is scenarios. Now scenario block in RISE was added quite a while ago, but it really allowed you to create, you kind of choose your own adventure. You know, you encourage the learner to make choices, to make a selection and move on from there. So it's great in that regards that you can actually create something the learner has to engage with. They need to interact with it. And generally the setup is pretty easy. You know, you can choose what character you want to use and what background you want to use. The character and backgrounds are generally taken from the content library, but what if you wanted to use your own background? And what if you wanted to use your own characters? Well, you can. It's a bit of a hack and it's a little bit of a process, but you can certainly do it. And here's the process. You create the scenario. You use the built-in character and all you then need to do is to change the background for whatever background you want because you can use the content library or you can upload your own image. Okay, so I might upload my own image 
And the image I want to use in this case is, you know, to save some time, I won't worry about doing it now, is this one here. So that's going to be my new background image. But I don't want to use the building characters. I want to use this character, right? This is an animated character that I've got, and I want to use it in my scenario rather than the built-in ones. Well, you can. You create the scenario as you normally would, add your own background, and just pick any character. doesn't matter which character you pick. And then you publish it. Right? So you publish it as normal. Once you've got it published, right, so it'll publish as a zip file, you unzip it. Right? So here's the unzipped version. And then in there, in the content assets folder, this is all of the images that are used as part of my RISE course. So I can go through and find the character that I chose when I built it. And I can look at the character, look at their mood or their body language or their expression. And what I want to do is I want to make a note of the name of that file. Okay, so what I've done is I've just gotten a Word document and I've just copied all of those file names. All right, so the talking, that's the file name for talking, stressed, asking, happy, so on. So it's just a matter of me going through the scenario, working out what images I've used, and then coming here and go, okay, what are those files called? Once I have those file names, guess what I do? I simply rename my characters to those file names, and I drop them into the RISE course. So here's one I prepared earlier. So again, we're in the content assets folder, and I've gone through and I've replaced all of the built-in character with my character. All I needed to do is make sure I got the right file name. Once I've done that, guess what? If you run it, now you're going to see your character as part of the scenario, not the built-in one. How do you run it? Well, to check it, you'd go to the content folder, index.html, and I've got all these instructions in the workbook, guys, so don't worry about writing this down. All right, so here's my scenario. There's my character. So I've got my own character, my own background, and I'm no longer restricted to the content library characters that are available. Got the expressions. Work our way through. And then we finish up with our character. And the great thing is, you can change all of the expressions to suit your particular character. Shocked, the happy, the stressed, the talking, whatever the case may be. And you can really personalize it to suit your audience rather than just working with the Content Library 360 characters. Okay. So another great way that you can further customize Rise by using your own scenario characters. All right, now I'm just coming up to my question time, guys. I do have a whole bunch of other examples in here. Some of these I've shared with you before, but I just want to touch on one more and then I'll open up some, inter uh, some questions as well. I talked about GIFs, you know, stuff that moves. Well, GIFs are all about, they're small graphic files and usually they're a looped animation, all right? They're not video files, they're not JPEG files, they're not PNG files, whatever the case may be, they're just like a short little video, but those that little video is captured as a GIF file or a GIF file, whatever you want to call it. So this here, this was the image that we used as my cover image, all right? And the nice thing again is it just gives a little bit more motion when you're doing it. Let me just refresh that so we can see it. There we go. So you can really make something move or happen as you work through it. So graphic images like that are one way you can do it. You can also introduce things like characters. So again, you're not having to put the investment into full motion video, but if you've got the capability to draw upon either an external talent or an internal talent who can create little things like GIFs, you can actually create something again that looks much more interesting than just the stock standard static image. So this is one that we created for hazards in the office. Okay, so things like, you know, being warm enough or cool enough in the office. Again, the movement just is a little bit more interesting, a bit more engaging. We move across to our two guys having an argument. Guy pushing a very heavy load. And then also someone carrying something very heavy. 
Now, the thing about GIFs is they're small file sizes, but they give you that extra bit of motion. Okay, that's all great, but how do we build them? Well, they do require a bit of a skill set. All right, so you do need to learn how to use them and a good way to work with them. So in the early days, you might need to practice. But again, there are some hacks that will allow you to create stuff that you can use as a GIF. Um, my, uh, my colleague, Blade McGurvin, who I work with here at Be Online, he's put together a best practice document here for creating GIFs. And now he uses things like Adobe Animate and a few other tools, uh, which are fantastic. They're good learning curves to get into them, but you can create all sorts of different animations. But there are other tools you can use. There's one that I use, which is called Screen to GIF. And what it is, it's basically a screen recorder. So you could actually play a short little video on the screen, record it with Screen to GIF, and then convert that into a GIF file. So some examples of how you may want to do that is you could actually, and I'll go back to my friend PowerPoint, is you could create something simple like this. You know, it's a clipboard with some information on it and you want to stamp it approved. Well, in PowerPoint, you can create that initial image. You can then duplicate it. And then on the second image, you add a transition the morph transmission. I'm not sure if anyone's come across this before. If you have, you'll go, yep, I know exactly where you're going with this. If you haven't, you'll be amazed at what PowerPoint can do. Once I add that morph transition, all right, oh, let's take the morph. I need to resize my stamp here. So I want to move it over here because my animation is I want to actually have the stamp come across and stamp on my clipboard. Now let's make it a bit bigger. So that's the first image. There's the second image. Now I add the morph transition and look what PowerPoint does to me automatically. So let's look at the slideshow. There we go. So with the morph transition, PowerPoint just goes, what's the starting point? What's the ending point? And then it builds it together, puts it all together. That there, you can play as a slideshow and then use a tool like Screen to GIF Recorder to record it and turn it into a GIF file. So that's another way that you can get that into your picture. I mean, you could also turn that into a video if you really wanted to. But again, you know, PowerPoint is much maligned, but does give you some capabilities. The other thing I love about that morph transition is you can also use it with 3D characters. So this one here, you can insert 3D characters into PowerPoint via 3D models. Let's duplicate it. I'm going to resize the model. And let's just move it around a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Again, I'm going to add the morph transition. And there you go. I can add a GIF or a video. That might talk about IT safety and then it zooms into the IT screen to talk about more information. So again, you don't need to be an animator to create little interactions like that. Just by using the morph transition, having an idea of your starting point and your end point, you can create some nice little animations. All right, so guys, I'm gonna call it there. I do have some other examples in that, um, in that RISE course, but as I said, I will share this with you so you can have a look at it. And there's some great ideas and if there's any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us and get in touch. So that brings me to the end of my little presentation, kind of just sparking the creative juices when it comes to working with RISE. I'm just going to pop over and see if there's any questions. I'm sure there is. Oh my gosh, here we go. So, uh, yep. Okay, your own custom characters, Alicia. So great question. Alicia asked about that. You can get characters from stock photo websites. So something like Shutterstock or iStock photo. Uh, they are some great tools that can actually, you can purchase like a, a, a whole range of characters in different motions or different moods, different expressions, and then you can use that within your actual projects as well. So that's a great way you can do it. Or you can actually contract it out. So if you've got some budget or a good business case for it, and I always like to myself a good business case, is that you could actually get someone to design some characters for your business. And the good thing about that is once you have them designed, you can use them all the time. So a good way that you can use those characters, not only in scenarios, but also across the board as well. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Franz asked a great question about if you're uploading text as an image, is it accessible? Okay. The answer, the short answer is no. They won't be able to read the text on the image, but the longer answer is you can always add alt text. 
okay? So with the alt text, you can add that text as part of the alt text to the image, and that'll be picked up by screen readers and also accessibility tools. So that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Uh, Kel's asked a great question. How do I save the morph transition to go to rise? Yeah, great question. What I would normally do is I would just create my two slides for the morph transition. And then what you can do is you can actually save that as a video. Okay, so you can, oh, it's not save, it's export. Sorry. So export down the bottom. So you can export that and create, turn it into a video. So that'll actually turn that little transition into a straight video for you. And then you can use it as a video and upload it just as a stock standard video into that. All right. Uh, or you could create the animated GIF straight out of PowerPoint. Or as I mentioned, there is another little tool which I sometimes use, uh, which is called uh, Screen to GIF. Uh, it's, it's a free tool. It's a bit chunky and a bit clunky. Uh, we, we don't, I'm not endorsing the product. I just find it's great to use for quick little things. And it just works like a screen recorder. So it'll record the video. So you'd, Use it, you basically show the slideshow, the PowerPoint slideshow. When you show the slideshow, you hit record. It'll record that slideshow and then save it as a GIF for you. So that's the great way that you can have a play with that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brett asked a great question. He said, in the scenario customization, when you replace those characters, do you have to make sure the pixel size of your new image is the same or at least the same height? as the rise size, so they work. Um, I'll be honest with you, Bert, I didn't for that example. I just picked some characters and just replaced them outright. And as you saw, um, rise does a pretty good job. You know, I think you don't wanna have them too crazy, but I think when rise actually produces that scenario itself, it works within a set transition. So I didn't worry about what the size of my characters were compared to rise. And as you saw there in that example, it was pretty good. You know, it actually fits it quite reasonably, so it's not, uh, not an issue. Uh, scroll back to that one. Yeah, so the good news about that one is that I didn't have to think about that. Rise just did it automatically for me. 